So I've been asked about harvesting basil specifically, and um, basil is a great crop. It's a really high dollar, high value crop in a lot of different areas. And uh, if you're kind of just getting into the commercial growing, or if even if you're a home uh, producer, it's a great crop to grow because it's worth a lot and it's really, really easy to grow. So um, harvesting, I'll go to square one, should always happen at dawn or pre-dawn. Okay, and there's a reason for that. When you come through the night, all the plants are holding their water really well. Um, they've got really good body, and there's a lot more um, weight to them. Okay, so it's, but it's not just a weight thing. The flavor is better. Just everything is better in the morning. They've gone through the night. Uh, their stomates are often closed. It's before the sun is is hitting them, and water demand is really high before they start losing water during the day. Um, so that's usually the time you want to harvest is fairly early in the morning um, and that goes for all crops that goes for lettuce that goes for chard that goes for kale that goes for whatever you're growing um, if it is a leaf leafy kind of crop you always want to harvest in the morning you'll get more water weight you'll get better money for it, it will be a higher quality product so um, with basil uh, we like to harvest fairly early if possible and, uh, but you know, if, if you have orders coming in during the day that need to be filled that day, sometimes it's worth just filling them. But when we cut basil, we usually take the tips. So this is, uh, this is the most high dollar part of the plant right here. Um, this, this crown, okay? This tip. So, um, I recommend taking tips. We'll, we'll basically cut a whole bunch of these and we'll put them in bags. Uh, we'll weigh them, we'll take them to market, to the restaurant, to, you know, whoever's ordered them. And uh, we can usually get quite a bit off of these towers. So I recommend fairly uh, consistent and constant harvesting if you can. As you can see, this, uh, this uh, you know, mass of towers, this is what, 12 towers here? Or 16 towers? And there's probably several hundred pounds of basil in here. Um, saleable basil and what we do is we just basically cut that um, we just cut that on a regular basis so we cut it every day um, to go to market to go to certain customers and we just kind of let it grow back now you can only do that for so long um, if you're doing complete harvest if you're cutting it back and leaving a little bit of material the, the root mass and, and part of the stem to regrow that plant you can do that um, but typically, uh, if we do that, we only do uh, two to three cuttings. At two to three cuttings, it's getting woody enough, it's getting mature enough, uh, that the flavor changes a little bit, it becomes a little bit more bitter, it's producing more of kind of those bitter alkaloids. And uh, we, don't, we don't like that as much, our customers don't typically like it. So uh, we stick with nice, young, tender shoots like this, and we'll do uh, one, between one and three cuttings, if it's a total harvest, or basically about four weeks to five weeks of cutting constantly um, for market before we tear everything out and replant. So uh, it's a great crop. It's really nice and easy to harvest. Uh, we don't do any rinsing on our basil. It comes off the plant nice and clean um, because we, you know, we're not we're not using any nasty pesticides or herbicides, and we're growing hydroponically, so it's not really dirty. Um, and it goes to market. They'll rinse it uh, wherever we're selling it. So we basically cut it dry, put it in the um, bags, send it to market, and call it good. And it's a great, easy crop to grow that's worth a lot of money. Redworms are really awesome. They're great at taking um, unavailable nutrients that are tied up in organic solids and organic compounds and consuming them, and they're like little bioreactors.